We've had 11 Star Wars movies, and in this video, I'm going to find the most powerful character from each one. So without further ado, let's get into it. And at number one, for the Phantom Menace, it came down to either Qui-Gon Jinn or Darth Maul. Luckily for me, they decided to fight it out themselves, and based on the winner of that duel, I'm gonna have to go with Darth Maul. That's not to say that Qui-Gon Jinn is weak in any way whatsoever. <laughs> on the contrary, this is the guy who figured out how to make himself into a Force Ghost and stick around even after getting a lightsaber jammed through his gut. Although, I guess that in this day and age, that's not exactly an impressive feat because everybody and their mother seems to survive it. But regardless, I would say that Qui-Gon has a different kind of power than Darth Maul. But in terms of raw strength, it's gonna have to go entirely to Darth Maul 100%. His sheer skill with the lightsaber blows me away. And let's be honest, anyone who can stay alive after having 50% of his body forcibly amputated and then to top it off, getting dropped down a giant metal pit obviously has some gumption. Now, you may be wondering, Jedward, you sharp-witted scoundrel, you, what about Obi-Wan Kenobi? If he killed Darth Maul twice, then wouldn't that make him more powerful than Darth Maul? Good question question, dear viewer, and the answer to that has two parts. First of all, I'm ranking these characters on a movie-to-movie -movie basis, and I think that overall, in The Phantom Menace, Darth Maul is more powerful. Yeah, sure, Obi-Wan gives Maul a surprise leg operation, but only after he was running off of the fumes that Qui-Gon's death gave him, and after Maul got cocky and underestimated Obi-Wan. So that's the first reason. The second reason that I stuck Maul at The Phantom Menace instead of Obi-Wan is that one of the rules for this video is that I can only put a character on this list once. And let's just say that there's somewhere else on this list coming up that I want to put Obi-Wan that I think he matches a little bit better with, so stick around for that. Let's move on to episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones has a lot of powerful characters in it. There's Master Yoda, Jango Fett, Mace Windu, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Dexter Jetster, and so many more. But come on guys, you know me, and you know who my favorite Star Wars character of all time is. And if you really thought that I could get through an entire video titled The Most Powerful Character from Every Star Wars Movie without mentioning Count Dooku, then you truly are lost. This man is a living legend and I absolutely love him. But I didn't pick him just because I'm a huge fanboy. Well, okay, maybe I did, but he actually is very powerful in the movie. He manipulates the entire plot of Attack of the Clones, and he takes on three Jedi, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda, and still lives to tell the tale. That's impressive. On top of that, as a character, he's so skilled in so many ways. He's obviously one of the most skilled lightsaber duelists ever. And then on top of that, he is so strong with the Force. I mean, he has abilities that other Sith can only dream of. Let me put it this way. There are only three people in all of Star Wars cinema who can actually use Force Lightning, and he's one of them. Now that is a flex if I've ever heard one. Again, like episode 2, there are a lot of powerful characters in Revenge of the Sith, but I think that this one's gotta go to Darth Sidious. Let me ask you this, is there another character in Star Wars that you can think of who spent decades with the Republic completely under his control, and then, at the opportune moment, turned it into a galactic empire with him having absolute authority? Yeah, I didn't think so. And then, to add on to that, he is also one of the three characters in Star Wars who has the ability to use Force Lightning, along with overall just being so powerful with the Force in general. He's also an absolute beast with a lightsaber, I mean anyone who can hold their own against Yoda and Mace Windu is definitely worthy of some recognition. And let's not forget about how he killed three Jedi Masters in like five seconds. What a boss. Finally, what really makes Sidious so powerful is his ability to corrupt and deceive. Think of it like this. He caused Anakin to fall to the dark side so that he could gain the ability to save Padme from dying. But then, after Padme died anyway, he somehow convinced Anakin to be his lapdog for another like 20 years or so. I mean, that's an insane amount of manipulation. Anyway, over. The Clone Wars are. And now we're moving on to the originals. But first, we gotta take a real quick look at Solo, A Star Wars Story, and Rogue One. And because we're going in chronological order, we're starting with Solo. Now, I gotta admit, this guy right here is probably the weakest character on this list, and there weren't really any characters from this movie that were that powerful, so let me know in the comments what you would put. But I ended up going with Chewbacca. Again, not a great pick, and I'm a tad disappointed, but Chewie does have that insane physical strength that all Wookiees have. I mean, have you seen the way that he rips off Stormtrooper's arms in LEGO Star Wars to complete Saga? Absolutely brutal. And then you can't forget about that bowcaster. Oh boy. I'd rather take a kick to the groin from Tom Platts than be on the receiving end of that thing, and it's not even close. Anyway, now we're heading over to Rogue One, and this choice was so obvious, it's that blind guy, Chirrut. Officially, he's not a Jedi, but with the things he can do, he's basically a Jedi. He took on like 20 Stormtroopers with nothing but a big stick, and oh, did I mention he's blind? And then this doesn't really have anything to do with power, but he was like the funniest part of the entire Rogue One movie. His one-liner game was on point, and usually that's Obi-Wan's job, but in his absence, Chirrut delivered. That guy was funny as heck. Are you kidding me? 
I'm blind. Finally, he obviously has some connection to the forest. I mean, if him kicking the butts of like 20 stormtroopers at once while being blind didn't give it away, he also did that thing where he walked through an active battlefield while muttering, I'm one with the force and the force is with me, and miraculously didn't get a new skull piercing. Although in the end, he did get obliterated, kind of like my toilet after the last time I chowed down on some Taco Bell. So the force couldn't have been with him that much, but still, compared to everyone else in the movie, it seems like Shira's pretty powerful, so I'll put him here. Now we're actually getting into the originals, and for Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, it's the character we've all been waiting for, Death Star Operator 27. No, I'm kidding. It's obviously Obi-Wan Kenobi. And speaking of this beautiful man, we can't just forget his most beloved meme. I think it goes something like, Hello there, everybody. My name is Jedward, and I make tons of videos about Star Wars and other franchises like it. And if you love Star Wars, then be sure to subscribe. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Look, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Everybody loves Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's the one consistent character in all of Star Wars that's just flat out great in all of his appearances, and A New Hope is no exception. One of the best parts of him in this movie is, first of all, Alec Guinness betraying him so well. I mean, for a guy who found it humiliating to play the role of a space wizard, he sure did give it a great performance, I'll give him that. But this video isn't about actors and their betrayals, it's about power. And yeah, I say that Obi-Wan is the most powerful character in this movie by far. It's a different kind of power than I think that we're used to as viewers. It's a lot more subtle and used in smaller ways, but it's in the small things. Like when Obi-Wan casually uses a Jedi mind trick on the Stormtroopers, or scares away the Tuskens by making Kray Dragon noises. And then of course, there's the duel with Vader. Some would look at this lightsaber fight and see that clearly Vader is more powerful. I mean, he won, didn't he? But I'm not so sure. Not to get philosophical, but I think that the point of the duel is that Vader thinks he won, because in his mind, there is nothing worse than death. However, in reality, Obi-Wan let himself be struck down, and in doing so, became one with the Force. And in a way, that's what makes him so powerful, is his acceptance of the afterlife, and his willingness to meet it with open arms. I don't know, that may have sounded like a load of baloney, and be sure to let me know in the comments if it did. Anyway, moving on to Empire Strikes Back, and this one is obvious, it's Darth Vader. Episode 5 exists entirely to show Luke Skywalker getting absolutely crushed in everything that he's trying to do and facing obstacles that he has to learn to overcome, which is great for his character. But we never really think about the flip side of that equation, which is that the person hammering Luke with these defeats is Darth Vader. And in doing so, we can see just how powerful he really is. He's devious, cunning, smart, incredibly strong with the force, and really good with a lightsaber. He plays all the rebels right into his hands, especially Luke Skywalker. And when he fights Luke, it's not even close. I mean, he literally almost freezes Luke in carbonate at the same time as dueling him with a lightsaber. That's kind of crazy, don't you think? I feel like there's not even that much more that I can say. Everyone just knows how strong Darth Vader is, and the movie that he's the most powerful in is by far Empire. It's not even close. But funnily enough, in Return of the Jedi, which is next on this list, obviously, the most powerful character in the entire movie is by far the one and only Luke Skywalker, savior of the galaxy. The original trilogy can be defined in many ways, and one of them is the slow progression of Luke Skywalker from farm boy to Jedi Knight. And when he actually does learn the ways of the Force and becomes a powerful character in Episode 6, it really hits home way harder. Naturally, he's pretty good at using the Force, especially for someone who only had two masters and neither of them for very long. And then on top of that, he's also gotten smarter and more calculating. But what's really interesting for me, and be warned, it might be time for Socrates' word to come out yet again, is that Luke's true power comes with resisting the dark side of the Force and saying no to the temptation that I'm not sure I could have refused. There's one quote that's really burning in the back of my mind, like a hobo's dumpster fire in a dark alley. And for the life of me, I can't remember who said it, but it went something along the lines of, it takes strength to resist the dark side, strength that those who've embraced it cannot even fathom. Let me know if that's sounds familiar to you, but the point is that Luke resisting the raw power of the dark side is one of the things that makes him the most powerful character in Return of the Jedi. The only person who I think is more impressive when it comes to saying no to the temptation of the dark side is Obi-Wan. If my master and the woman I loved both died in my arms and the man I trained became the most evil human in the galaxy, I'm not sure that I could have resisted the temptation of the dark side, I gotta be honest. But right now, we're talking about Luke, and I think that he is far and away the strongest character in Episode 6. Alright, we have just arrived at the Star Wars sequels, and as always, I heave a humongous sigh before diving into these trash cans, but without further ado, let's get into it. Hands down, the most powerful character in The Force Awakens is Kylo Ren. I mean, that gets introduced in like the first three minutes of the movie. Kylo walks on in, kills some old man who looks pretty important, and then freezes a blaster bolt in mid-air. I can't even lie. I remember watching this in theaters, and when that bolt stopped in its tracks, my mouth fell open. I couldn't believe what I just watched. Now that I've seen Star Wars Theories fan film, where Vader catches like 500 of these at once, it's not as impressive to me as it was back then. But still, this was a pretty boss move, I will say. But anyway, as The Force Awakens went on, it became harder and harder to keep thinking of Kylo Ren as a powerful character, because they just kept making Rey better than him at stuff that she shouldn't have been. But there were still a lot of scenes that he just radiated strength and power in. And one of my all-time favorite things about him was how cool his mask was. I freaking loved that thing. Moving on, we're in the final two movies now, and the most powerful character in Ryan Johnson's love letter to Star Wars, The Last Jedi, is, in my opinion, Princess Leia. Now, there is one reason for this, and one reason 
alone. Well, actually, no, there are two reasons, but saying there is one reason alone just sounds cooler. I don't know. Regardless, reason number one is because of how Princess Leia got blasted into the vacuum of space, got almost entirely frozen over, and then somehow, some way, turned into space Superman, flying back to the ship just by looking at it and pointing her hand in that general direction. However much I may think that it was a stupid plot device, having that ability does make her pretty powerful. And then that brings me right to the second reason that I put Princess Leia here, which is that there's no one else in this entire movie that I can think of who's more powerful. I mean, I guess you could say that Luke Skywalker was, but I really don't think that you watched The Last Jedi and come away thinking, wow, Luke was so strong. And also, even if you did come away thinking that, which is completely fine, by the way, everyone likes different movies for different reasons, I can't put a character twice, and you better believe that I am not taking him away from Return of the Jedi. That would be like sacrilegious or something. But seriously, aside from Luke, can you think of anyone else in The Last Jedi who is more powerful? Kylo Ren was a whiny sissy, Snoke got gutted like a fish, and Rey, well, I guess Rey is pretty powerful, but I can't use her because, well, you'll see in a minute. Anyway, moving on to the final movie in the sequel trilogy, The Rise of Skywalker, we have a character who, despite his many flaws as a protagonist, is exceptionally strong, like in every single way that I can think of. Whether that be with a lightsaber, with the force, or just with random things that he should have no reason to be good with, like flying ships or healing wild animals for some reason. And that character, of course, is the one and only Rey Palpatine. I bet I caught you off guard by saying he and him, didn't I? Despite how much I dislike Rey, I will admit that she's very powerful, although she is kind of weird. And speaking of weird characters, you need to watch this video right here, where I found the weirdest character from every Star Wars movie. I promise you'll like it. 